Hello, it's Roland from East Marsh Acres, and over there is Patricia. So uh, it's Saturday, November 2nd, and uh, we are getting things ready for the winter, essentially. Um, so Tricia, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Okay, so I'm... Uh, what did you do to begin well, with? First off, I tied all the weeds, except for where the pile of weeds were. Now they're all over there. Um, but what I'm planning to do is, this is going to be our blueberry patch. patch. We put the blueberries over there once, and we moved them there. They did okay, but talking to where we picked blueberries and everything, they need a bit more sun and stuff, and a lot of peat moss. So I've... Because they need acidic soil, <coughs> right? Right. So I've... At the house where our chicken brooder, I covered... We um, put in a tarp, and I put in... Uh, peat moss and water lots of water and then it's been soaking for about two weeks he, he said to soak it about a week but it's just that's yeah been two weeks and so so I've I had one blueberry plant from him already but we have three more and then I'm gonna get more probably in the spring or next fall and and put more here so um, rows of them? Yeah, so I'm going to put them staggered, like this, this, this one, and then like, so I probably have room for about 10 more, which is probably all we need. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I've put peat moss in, then I'm going to put the blueberry, put some of the dirt in, put more peat moss, so, so kind of layer it in there. And, uh, oh, it looks like Albie's going to dig. Yeah. He's going to help gonna help dig. So uh, I have to go over there and dig up the blueberries that we already have. And uh, and then I'm going to, um, this week, everyone's getting rid of their leaves. So I'm going to put um, a whole bunch of leaves down here so that the... That the uh, ground cover? For a ground cover and that the weeds don't all grow up again. I think about all the work I did the first year raking this is all topsoil that was brought or brought over like from the building and it was all nice and I raked it and I planted um, clover but we just couldn't keep up with with the weeds like it was it's it was incredible how many well we say them weeds but they're natural plants, plants that yeah. are growing up in this area and where uh, we don't necessarily want them. so there is Hemp clover weeds. in here you can see yep. it well, I, I <coughs> see some plants right there. Yeah. But the thistles, for sure, take over. And then some other, well... Goldenrod. Goldenrod and and other well, thick it's plants. It's kind of interesting that there's bulrushes in here, too. So it must be yeah. quite quite uh, moist most yeah. of the time. Well, that hole was very easy to dig up. I, we had a spirea there because my... My, I have tulips planted around here because I was planting to have like wildflowers up on that hill and I planted them like two or three times, taking out every thistle that I could get at or do and they just grow back and take over all the wildflowers and now the tulips have come back every year. But, <coughs> so anyways, um, some, some Landscaping plans that you have don't always work out um, according to nature, so you just have to rejig and uh, replant and adapt. And adapt, yeah. yeah. So um, we want to live uh, with nature instead of against it, kind of thing. So let's live with it and uh, do what we can. So I'm going to go over there and dig up the the blueberry plants. Well, just just to follow up on that, I mean, you you will see that we have very little area that we are uh, mowing, if you want to think of it that way, uh, because this the the whole idea of mowing grass <laughs> is 
it, it makes no sense uh, at all. Because uh, the, the, the idea is that you're going to end up with monoculture, i.e. one type of plant, which doesn't happen in nature at all. And you have to use energy, lots of it, uh, usually in the form here of electricity, but in a lot of other places with gas mowers and our neighbors. Not, not to disparage them, but uh, all of the grass that you see here, they spend hours every week during the summer keeping it cut. Yeah. And for, for what, what? what? What purpose, yes. To, to look nice according to human standards. Yeah. Um, but or, or what we say, cultured standards or whatever. But if you look back into the centuries ago, this is what fields were. And unless you were growing crops, this is what how it stayed, you know. They didn't have, I don't even, I think it was like um, when Louis the 14th or something did his gardens and then there was all grass and hedges and all that in, kind of in, stuff. Uh, yeah. And all the English castles did it and blah, you know, so it, it became a phenomenon and, but it went against nature. And uh, so we're, we're. We're using this property as best we can for to make a permaculture um, property. So then you that's where you have to live with nature, and uh, <clears throat> so that's what we're we're trying to do. So yeah, it doesn't look the nicest according to. Um, but the diversity. Our I mean, just just yeah. go across this the driveway here. And so an understory, uh, primarily clumps of grasses, grasses. and and then um, uh, I think this is uh, I don't know what it is, uh, not yeah. goldenrod, but this is another primary plant. Goldenrod, and it's gone to seed, so are, we see these the seeds. Queen Anne's lace, right? And and there's some there's some grasses. And people higher actually grasses. buy those grasses, like in the in the in the uh, you know and then they put them where they want them yeah but you know well the the trish has already um alluded to this this morning the the whole idea of a weed um from from our perspective there there really is no such thing as a weed that has absolutely no purpose to it um in within the 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 uh, culture of fields and uh, uh, growing up to uh, produce forests, etc. Um, all of these plants have a location. So the definition that we use for weed is a plant that has a purpose for for its life and and its life cycle and etc. But it's growing in a place that we don't want it. Yeah. So yeah. that that becomes the the definition. So there is no such thing as a, you know, something that that is totally ir irrelevant. Now there are uh, plants that are that, very invasive. Yeah, that are very invasive, that. and typically yeah. uh, those are plants that come from another area that are not native to the particular a area and and you have to be very careful about how you're treating those particular plants etc um, because they spread out and they take over uh, large areas um, but we we actually think that this is quite um, quite nice to actually have this this kind of piece uh, and sure it would be helpful um, if we could get uh, some of our uh, trees to grow a little bit faster uh, so that they could establish themselves, etc. So uh, I've uh, taken you to our fruit trees that we've got planted over there and that are being tended to most, to, for the most part, by our neighbor. But uh, that, that's not the point of what we're trying to do here. Uh, so within the swale, you again, we're ending up with bulrushes. These were not here originally. It probably came from the marsh over there. Um, and uh, then we're growing our raspberries. And yeah, we'll try to uh, decrease the number of plants that are growing in between the raspberry bushes and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for the most part, we are not going to be spending energy and um, machinery to cut down these plants. 
Instead, we'll actually plant in between them because these will die off uh, at the end of the, uh, the the summer, and you're seeing that occurring. I mean, there's still some life with some of these plants, um, and, and the grasses around the shed are uh, still quite quite viable. Um, but we'd like to encourage, you know, plants that we can make use of. Oh, well, look at that! There's new leaves that have grown up at the top of the black currants that uh, are now going to be uh, dropping off. Same thing's happened over here. So these leaves will will drop off. There's some new ones there again. again. That's what happens when you end up with these warmer temperatures coming through. And apparently we've got another one. Uh, another day of 18 or 20 degrees coming up next week. And we'd like to encourage uh, apex uh, forest kinds of trees like this oak which is growing very very nicely. I don't know if you uh, remember going back in uh, the videos of this channel uh, this oak started out very tiny little tree with three leaves on it and now it's uh, two years later uh, we're getting to this particular size. I took a, uh, a major second branch off of it. I'm trying to encourage this branch to become the major uh, trunk of the tree. We'll see what happens as a consequence of that. And then I also want to show you the, the other tree that we want to encourage. And it's coming along. It again started out as a bare root uh, that we brought in from our daughter-in-law's place. So here you can see the maple. Very few leaves at the top of the tree, but the rest of the tree is sound. And so we're going to cover up uh, keep keep it covered uh, for the next little while to make sure that our friendly neighborhood rabbits don't uh, take advantage of it. And if you take a look again, you know, so the same same growing conditions, but we just introduce things like chickens into the area and this is what you end up with so the chickens essentially become our tillers are they quick no of course not but are they thorough they certainly are they have basically taken all of the vegetation in this entire area that you're seeing here and reduced it to what you see. Now chickens were in here too. They don't particularly care for the really tall stuff, this is, which is why it's uh, still around. But in other areas where they don't have the same kinds of stands, you see that they basically decimate the entire uh, area. So they bring it down to something that is um, more accessible and that's exactly why we have them over here right now to do the same kinds of things. Again, note that uh, this was pretty wild when we uh, brought the chickens over here last week and in a week's time they have essentially reduced it to what you see here so they're, they're scratching in the uh, the dirt they are eating up the plants themselves as well they are having a huge effect oh and and they're pooping on the land so they're actually enriching it simultaneously to taking 
uh, other nutrients out of it. And yes, we do supplement the feed. So you can see the tubes of feed. There's one there and there's one on the other side of the of the uh, chicken coop as well. But they, to a large extent, they do a lot of the work of tilling the land, clearing it, and this is what they did over the last month or so. Just absolutely amazing work. And we can actually put them to work in other areas as well. Anyhow, um, enough of the philosophy uh, for today. some more peat moss to top it off. Okay, back to the blueberry patch. 